my dear friends we have been talking on engineering procurement and construction commissioning of 66 by 11 kv substation In this, we have already covered four sessions in which we have listed the activities. We have seen the different bus bar arrangements and we have uh, seen the layout and given land diagram also. Uh, in the last session, we have seen the how to protect the line insulators, transmission line insulators against lightning stroke. Uh, meanwhile, we have also seen how can the lightning stroke occur, what are the different kinds of lightning stroke and why should we protect against this. But uh, we spent only for ground wire at the top of the tower, ground roads or counterpoise wires for connecting the ground wire to the ground. And we have seen that the shielding, shielding angle should be less than 30 degree. I mean, we can spend that much for the line insulators because they are not very costly. But the Equipment in the substation are very costly. We were talking that wherever the induced lightning stroke is there, and from there when it becomes free, it will start traveling on both the sides, and it can terminate at power station or substation. The equipment in power station and substation are very costly. Mainly, power transfer power transformer is the costly is the costliest equipment and therefore for protecting these costly equipment we need more complicated more uh, costly and uh, more comprehensive lightning arrester so in today's session we will see the different types of Lightning arrestors. Uh, the lightning arrestor, this, this whatever he has written here he is explaining the wave shape of lightning arrestor. As we had seen last time, it reaches peak within 1.2 microsecond and peak can be 1000 uh, kilovolts. So it, uh, it is damaging. And then that peak will exponentially come down slowly and it will become VP by 2 at certain time. The time within which it comes to VP is known as front time and Time within which it comes to VP by 2 is known as tail time. But as I told to you, the it is electricity and it travels also over the transmission line. And when it is traveling, it will meet a nodal point somewhere. It will meet a node. Usually you see node in basic electrical engineering, we used to learn we used to talk that when three uh, electrical connections or three circuits are meeting it becomes the nodal point but here uh, for lightning strokes even two circuits are meeting there also the node can occur provided the surge impedance of both the circuits is different Surge impedance of one circuit is Z1 
and surge impedance of second circuit is Z2. So when that knot point comes, certain part of the lightning stroke which is incident will uh, will uh, uh, reflect and certain part will transmit the reflected component is value is e dash is equal to e is the main incident wave e dash is z2 by z1 upon z1 plus z2 times e the incident wave and transmitted wave is e double dash is equal to 2z2 upon z1 plus z2 times e so uh, it does continue like this and the reflected component e dash will go back to the line and once again it will be it will meet nodal point somewhere so there also it will reflected and refracted or reflected and transmitted so reflected wave will go on reflecting that is known as Bevely's lattice structure. But no doubt it will not continue for a long time because it is going to be attenuated and uh, slowly after a certain time it will become normal voltage. But it is reflected many times and as many times it is reflected it is going to stress the insulation. So this is very important. Say transmitted wave E dash is to Z2. Z2 is the uh, surge impedance of the uh, second part, right? Uh, not the part on which the wave is incident. So if your power transformer is not far off from the starting of the uh, substation that is the lightning arrester. It may be just 10 meters or 5 meters. Say in small substation, 66 by 11 kV, 50 MVS substation, it is very near. So Z2 is very small. So 2Z2 is on the uh, numerator. So E double dash, that is the transmitted component, is uh, very small. Therefore, you are not worried about. But if it is a big substation like 220 kV or 400 kV substation, transformers are far away, sometimes as far as 100 meters or 200 meters or 300 meters. So then Z2 becomes big, large. And that transmitted component, when it arrives to transformer, it is yet large. So you have one lightning at the entry of the substation that is a must because you have to start protecting uh, circuit uh, current transformer insulation pt insulation switch gear insulation post insulator insulation you have to uh, rather protect all the equipment of the substation so at the entry of the substation lightning arrest is always there Plus, if the transformer is far, then near the transformer also, there will be a lightning arrestor. That is, that is important. That is very important. This one has to know, right? So when you are, when you are counting the numbers of lightning arrestor you have to procure, you, you must know this. So this is what is shown. Z1 is the... Uh, surge impedance is Z1, Z2. Z1 is for incoming. E is the incoming surge. That E will, E double dash is transmitted component and E dash is reflected component. It is negative. It is going in the negative side. Uh, so this is what is shown by figure also. So, what are the requirements of good surge arrestor? These are 
purely ideal requirement. Lightning arrestor does not meet with all requirements. But first we should learn what are the ideal requirement of lightning arrestor. The first requirement is lightning arrestor should not absorb any current during the normal operation. That is current absorbed, current going to ground because lightning arrestor is connected between line wire and ground, R and ground, Y and ground, B and ground. So during normal condition of the power system, current flowing through lightning arrestor is zero, should be zero. No leakage current should flow. But when there is an over voltage due to lightning activity or switching surge, it has to provide an easy path to earth. It has to provide an easy path to earth. That means uh, large current will flow and the uh, over voltage surge is grounded it will not go to the substation equipment thereby the substation equipment will be uh, protected the second requirement that is the impulse spark over voltage that means the value at which the uh, arrestor sparks over it grounds the current that is known as impulse spark over voltage. The impulse spark over voltage of the arrestor must safeguard the insulation of the terminal apparatus. That means all transformer, CTPT, etc. Third requirement is the diverter must be capable of carrying the discharge current for a short duration of time because it is carrying current of the order of 10,000 amperes for a small time. That is obviously total lightning activity is complete within one, one millisecond. So very short time. But for that short time, it should be capable of carrying that current and lightning arrestor should not be damaged. Fourth requirement is the arrestor must after discharge cease to carry any current. That means once the voltage is below safe limit, it should cease to carry the current. This is not happening. Follow current is flowing in the arrestors. And follow current is flowing means uh, it is the waste, energy wastage. Because you see, it should be used instead of it is the wastage of energy. So actually, after the voltage is below the safe limit, the lightning arrestor should seal, seal, seal in itself. And after operation, after one, one time it has operated, it should be ready to accept and deal with ensuing surges. Second time also it should uh, uh, operate. Third time also it should operate. No doubt, number of returns are not infinite. Number of operations are finite. And that the lightning arrestor manufacturer will tell you that my lightning arrestor will be able to operate for 10 times or 20 times or whatever. And therefore, the uh, surge counter also should be there on lightning arrestor. Right? How many times it has absorbed the, uh, or how many times it has passed the lightning current that should be there. Uh, figure 3.9 shows the function of simple type of. So this is shown uh, in terms of figure also. Uh, this is what I just uh, skipped off because this is what I'm explaining in term, terms of figure. Surge is incoming. The lightning surge is incoming to lightning arrestor. At that time, lightning arrestor obviously is not uh, uh, operating. It is not passing any current. It is not working. Then the surge has gone ahead. It has gone further. So this is the dotted line that is shown is the uh, is the current. Uh, is, uh, dotted line is, I mean, whatever is shown by dot, 
that point is the impulse spark over a voltage. So yet the lightning arrestor is not conducting. When you go further, right? I, I mean, when you go further, then the arrow shows. You see, the arrow is there. This arrow, arrow shows that the lightning arrestor started conducting because now the that means your uh, your uh, the incoming this uh, this was there it has it has flattened it has not gone beyond this so that is that further the Further, when the lightning arrestor passes, it is yet conducting because uh, it is parting, passing through tail, but yet the voltage is more than the spark over voltage. So it is conducting. When it reaches spark over voltage, yet it is conducting. But when it is less than that dotted line spark over voltage, it should seal in. That is the requirement of good lightning arrestor. So this is in terms of figures. The different types of lightning arresters used in practice are road gap type lightning arrester, horn gap type lightning arrester, modified horn gap type lightning arrester, wall type lightning arrester and gapless lightning arrester. We will see road gap, but horn gap and modified horn gap are not very important. They are very rarely used in distribution transformers. So we will skip off, but we will study other three lightning arrestor in detail so that you can understand what is the construction of the lightning arrestor. Because once you understand everything, then only you can uh, prepare a good specification. And when you have to go for inspection, you can inspect it properly. If you do not know, how it works, then you cannot inspect. So I am explaining the lightning arrestor for that purpose. Road gap type lightning arrestor is very simple. You see that I will show in terms of figure. This is road gap type. Post insulator of bus bar or the bushing of the transformer is shown. Uh, earth gantry is there. So lower part, lower road gap, the lower uh, gap is shown, is grounded. And the upper road gap is at the high voltage, HVE conductor is shown. Right? This is a cross-sectional view. Road gap, there is a distance between them. The distance is so arranged that when the normal power is flowing, it is it will not spark over. But when over voltage is there, Whenever, while, whenever the lightning over voltage is there, it will spark over and it will protect the uh, post insulator or bushing of the uh, transformer. Simple, very simple construction, very cheap also, not very costly. right? So this is what is written here. Uh, but such a lightning arrestor has many disadvantages. One thing is that the lightning arrestor is in open execution. So it is, uh, say, as a transformer is in open execution. Road gap type lightning arrestor is also in open execution. So it is subjected to uh, fog, it is subjected to moisture, subjected to rain, everything. So spark over voltage is not fixed and therefore it can maloperate also when it is not required to operate and then it may give trouble, right? The second problem is distance in road gap, between road gap, because distance between road gap is one third of the road gap of the height of the uh, bushing. But for 11 kV, 22 kV, 33 kV, bushing is very small. So, one third of that is 
the distance. This this distance which you are seeing in road gap that let me uh, sorry. This distance. This distance is very small. And when this distance is very small, there is there's there is every possibility that it may be breezed by bird, some bird well and it will stuck there. Small, small birds or small things will start that. So, lightning is shorted. That is, that is the, that is the problem. Sorry, for this, uh, the disadvantages. So, it will be short circuiting the lightning ester. Third thing is, there is no arc quenching facility. Once arc will start, it will. Uh, quench after 300 millisecond only. So when road gap operates, there are every chances that the earth relay will trip. Actually, when lightning arrester uh, works, the the uh, uh, there should be no earth fault relay operation, but it may happen here. The fourth problem is the operation of the arrestor gives rise to chopping because immediately the voltage will go to zero. That is known as chopped wave. And chopped wave, that means the rate of drop of voltage is higher than rate of rise of voltage. And uh, it may give rise to uh, deterioration of the insulation. So chopped wave is so often worse than the normal wave. Uh, and therefore, in laboratories, chopped wave impulse test is also done. So, this chopping of a wave, it should not chop. Wave should go as it is. Tail should go because tail is not going to um, uh, rather damage the insulation. So, that is happening in this road gap type lightning arrestor. So these are the advantages, uh, disadvantages. Therefore, we are we are using road gap type lightning at the most for uh, the protection of bushing of big large transformers, 220 kV, 400 kV transformers. What is normally used is this wall type lightning arrestor. What is wall type lightning arrestor? Wall type lightning arrestor uses silicon carbide element. Silicon carbide is a nonlinear element. It is very stir. It does not follow Ohm's law. The law that it follows is I is equal to K varies to N, where N is the nonlinearity index. And the value of nonlinearity index is varying from 4 to 5. That is, that is the uh, thing. Uh, silicon carbide blocks are used with series gap because only silicon carbide block, uh, if, uh, if you use, then the current flowing through lightning arrestor may be few amperes. 1 ampere, 2 ampere. 1 ampere or 2 ampere or 3 ampere is not a leakage current. Therefore, to make the current zero, you have to use uh, the SIC valve block blocks in series with the uh, gaps, series gaps right, that you have to use. And this gaps and SIC are housed in a uh, porcelain chamber so it is inside something so it is not exposed to the uh, moisture or fog or rain or anything so that disadvantage of the on uh, the road gap type lightning arrestor is gone the uh, but when you use this in figure, I will show you, it will be better. When you use this lightning arrestor, what happens? That there is SIC valve blocks on both sides. There are spark gaps. And then in between spark gaps, there is a magnetic blowout coil that is used for arc quenching. The arrangement is such that 
all these three uh, gaps will be in parallel. I mean, they will come in their circuitry is like this. Electrical circuit is like this, but the magnetic blood coil will uh, quench the arc of all the three sphere gaps. Uh, what happens that when the rate of rise, that means when the lightning arrestor falls, the rate of rise of voltage is very high. So di by dt is very high. So LDI by dt, that is the impedance of word is very high. Therefore, actually very negligible current or zero current pass through the passes through the protective air gap. Uh, sorry, through the magnetic blood coil. But when the wave is passing through tail, now di by dt is less. So current will pass and that current, because it's a coil, it will induce a uh, blowout effect. So it will blow out the arc in this spark gap. So arc will not continue for longer time. So arc quenching arrangement, which was not there in the uh, road gap lightning arrestor, it is there here in wall type lightning arrestor. So that is, that is also an added advantage. Uh, but you see, it so happens that uh, one unit, this which you are seeing, may not be able to withstand uh, the voltage between, because it is between line and ground. So if you, say you are using 220 kV or 400 kV system, one unit is not enough. There may be three or four units in series. And when there are three or four units in series, uh, the voltage distribution will be uneven as happens as, as what happens with the swing insulator. Voltage distribution will be uneven. The, the unit which is nearer to the high voltage terminal will be sharing more voltage. So it may discharge and uh, then afterwards all units one by one will discharge. So uh, lightning arrestor may mal operate so that it it, it, it is not happening like that. And the voltage distribution is even. If there are four units and total voltage divided by four, that should be the case. For that, we are using RG grading resistance, which is shorting the spark gaps. But you have to remember that this RG, no doubt, it is in terms of mega ohms, very large resistance. Current passing in the, is in terms of milliampere. But RG is continuously in circuit, continuously the current is passing. And uh, however the current is in milliampere, but resistance value is high, therefore RG is going to be get hot. I mean the temperature will rise and it may get damaged. So that it, it may not get damaged, the RG grading resistors have to be very thoroughly tested and uh, in, in, in actual practice it is going to be there for 24 days and 365, uh, 24 days, yes, uh, 24 hours and 365 days or so to say uh, every con continuously it is going to be there and you cannot keep this for so many days in the factory. So what is known as accelerated life test is done. You are passing, you are passing, you are giving, you are applying more voltage than normal. You are passing much more current than normal. And you are using this in uh, the contaminated area. I mean, contaminated area is in a uh, specifically uh, created. And in that area, it is tested for one hour, two hour, or three hour, or ten hour. Taking it for granted that within these diff, uh, very, uh, very bad condition, it is tested. In good condition, it will, it will not be damaged. That is known as accelerated life test. So RG is passed through accelerated life test. If you want to see the effect of K, you see what happens with K. 
voltage is one per unit and uh, current is also one per unit. If voltage is one per unit, current is obviously K. I is equal to KV raised to N. So if voltage is one per unit, one raised to one is one only. So no, not, not large current is passing. But if voltage is 10% higher, 1.1, then current is roughly 50% higher, 1.4641. If voltage is twice, then current is 16 times. And if voltage is six times, current is 1296 times. You see, you can, this does not follow Ohm's law. So at high voltage, high frequency, high voltage, the lightning arrestor practically shorts the high voltage conductor to ground and under normal condition it does not operate so the effect of k if you if you see these figures you will you will realize what is the effect of non linearity index uh, what are the function of spark gaps spark gaps in the wall arrest are most significant they isolate the circuit from ground against maximum line to ground voltage. Maximum line to ground voltage means normal plus 10%. It sparks over at a value well below the withstand level of the equipment. If equipment can withstand uh, 300 kV or 200 kV, you see for 220 kV, it can withstand 220 kV, but uh, we will spark over at uh, 1.2 times less. That means 220 divided by 1.2. 220 kV is line to line. Actually, line to ground is 127 kV. But we do not spark over at 127 kV. We spark over at little less. 1.2 or 1.3 times less. Third thing it does is it interrupts the follow current. Because arc is quenched by magnetic blowout coil uh, it, but follow current is not completely zero that is what we are going to see uh, and then this uh, because the gaps are there and between each gap there is a metal conductor so uh, so to say the uh, stray capacitance with that and therefore the voltage distribution is uneven and therefore we have to use the grading resistor and grading resistor is rigorously tested and it's also tested uh, using accelerated life test all these things are told it, it is being repeated here the function of nonlinear wall blocks they limit the magnitude of the discharge voltage while discharging the transient current, right? Because discharge voltage should be less than the value of the voltage that the equipment can withstand. Therefore, the discharge voltage should be well below the basic insulation level of the protected apparatus. Second function is it discharge current uh, to discharge the energy associated with transient current. That means it discharges the energy uh, to ground so that the equipment are protected. And to limit the power follow current, because afterwards the power frequency current will be there. That should be, uh, that should be less or uh, ideally it should not be there, right? Uh, and uh, spark gap will then uh, the current through spark gap will discontinue because now the resistance of the SIC valve block is high when wave is passing through tail the di by dt is small and therefore uh, the uh, because it is uh, non-linear its resistance is large and therefore the uh, spark in the arc in the spark gap is uh, quenched and we have quenching arrangement also so that is uh, that is the uh, uh, 
those are the functions. In wall type lightning arrestor, the series gaps are the weakest link. Right. Wall type lightning arrestor, the series gaps are the weakest link. Why it is weakest link? Because it is a reason for nonlinear voltage distribution. No doubt, you are keeping the, uh, so to say, you are keeping the resist, uh, grading resistor. So that problem is solved. But the another problem is that that if you are keeping the wall type lightning arrestor in contaminated condition, that means if your substation is near uh, fertilizer area or petrochemical industry or in the coastal area, that is coastal area, the air is salty. So there, there will be uh, the layer of salt layer of uh, the uh, uh, fertilizer products, etc. Any many of them are conducting. Therefore, the problem comes, right? What problem comes that is uh, discussed in these figures. It will, it will be very easy to understand. If the lightning arrestor is in ideal area, then CG is the capacitance of the uh, unit and CS is the uh, stray capacitance. But stray capacitance is the same. CS, 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 CS. All for all five units it is same. Therefore, you can calculate the correct value of RG so that the voltage distribution is even. Therefore, that is not the problem. There it is not the problem. There this wall type lighting error is very good. But if it is in contaminated area, second figure, then the stray capacitance, because on the surface there is there are contaminations. So stray capacitance is not same CS1, CS2, CS3, CS4, like that. And therefore, you cannot calculate the right value of RG. And if you know that CS1 is this, CS2 is this, CS3 is this, this then you can calculate, but that also you cannot say because contaminations are not known. How much contamination will be there? So now the voltage distribution will be uneven and lightning arrestor may fail, right? So uh, the uh, because of that, the, because of these reasons, the lightning arrestor fails. And weakest link is the, is the spark gap. So what we do is we do not use a gap lightning arrestor. We use a gapless lightning arrestor. We are using MOSA, metal oxide lightning arrestor. Metal oxide means zinc oxide we are using, ZNO. And that ZNO is better. Why it is better? It's it is also nonlinear, but its rule is its rule is also I is equal to KV is to N. But that nonlinearity N, which was 4 to 5 for silicon carbide, is now 25 to 30 for ZNO, and therefore gaps are not required. Normal current passing is very small, and gaps are not required. Therefore, the uh, uh, because gaps are not required, uh, the lightning arrestor will not will behave properly. Uh, the gapless lightning arrestor Moza, we will study the next session. Here uh, we end, right? So please remember, adapt me and uh, share the video to as many friends as possible because this engineering is not written in a single book. Uh, so engineering is a thing which people learn from practice. So those who are having industrial experience, they know the engineering because they have done the engineering, they have procured things. They have prepared specification. So how to do that is learned in when you are uh, doing your job only. So before that, 
uh, you know something and therefore this these lessons are very useful so these useful lessons please pass on to as many engineers as possible and you also please read this uh, complete video so with that i i thank you all and good day